Hello, welcome to Croft House. In part one of this bench restoration, I showed you how to make a waterproof cover. Here in part two, the tutorial is on the bench restoration and includes instructions for renovating and painting the wooden bench and restoring and spray painting the metal arm trays. In part three, I'll show you how to make a piped cushion for the bench. Links to the other parts will follow in the description below this video. Before we start, we'll take a look at the materials um, that I'll need to um, renovate this bench. And you would need if you had a bench like mine. So in my bench, there are two little black metal trays um, the, um, for umbrellas or walking sticks that go through the handles. And what I'm going to do first of all is strip them with some paint stripper. They're rusty inside on the bottom so I shall use some rust remover to get that off. We've then got some enamel primer spray and some black satin spray. Wear a mask. Whenever you're using chemicals or spray, it's better to wear a mask. Uh, we then go on to the chair. And the first thing I'm going to do is give it a good clean with a mixture of white spirit and methylated spirit. Um, I'm then going to treat any woodworm with some woodworm killer. And then fill any cracks with wood filler. The next thing I will do is sand it. So the filler will need smoothing and there may be other lumps and bumps that need it as well. So I've got an electric sander because I want to get any old um, varnish or whatever is left on it. A lot of it is bare wood because it's been sat in the sun in verandas for so long. Um, so I will use the sander, I'm a homemade sanding block and some plain fine sandpaper. So we then get on to painting it. This is outdoor paint, it's an outdoor primer, I'll give it one coat of that and two coats of top coat which is a satin and it says on the tin that it lasts six years. I'm using just plain um, paint brushes, the furniture, fine bristled paint brushes. And the last thing I'm going to do, this is a piece of coir matting that I pinched from the bin of a local mat maker. And I want to put it on the bottom of the feet because the chair is wooden, it's old, so it's probably quite porous, even though it's got going to have three coats of paint and I'll put plenty on the bottom. I want to really protect it from any water that might get under there. So I'm going to cut this up and then glue it with Gorilla Tough Glue. Great names, aren't they? Gorilla Glue and Paint Predator. <laughs> um, so all these materials have been sourced from my local high street and I live in a small rural town in the east of England. Um, which is mostly charity shops and cafes, but I've managed to get everything there, some of the tools I've had longer. So it's not difficult to do, and you can buy more professional, more expensive materials and equipment, but you will see as we do this chair that it isn't necessary. So the next job is to make any repairs that the chair needs. The bottom of the chair has split and come adrift, so I've got some little nails um, just to tack it back into place. I have some woodworm killer because there are some woodworm holes, whether it's old or new, it's best to treat it. And wood filler just to fill in any cracks or splits that I don't want to see. The brush is to work the woodworm killer in, the scraper for the filler and a hammer for the nails. My father, who's 92, is making me some new bits because this one is split. And they're the little bits of wood that hold the metal trays in, which I probably won't use outside, but it'd be nice to have it back together. And eventually I will um, 
treat these as well. The board, I'm not the front, I'm not going to put it back in because it's easier to rub it down, sand it a little bit like this. As you can see, I've put the bench on some cardboard just to protect it. And I'm going to start by nailing down the bottom that's come adrift. As you can see, it's quite loose here. And I'm going to nail in between the two nails, old nail holes that have come out. So when you nail into an old piece of brittle wood, go very, very slowly so that you don't split the wood. And this looks like it has been split. Perhaps somebody who put it on originally wasn't so worried uh, as long as the bottom holds in place. Check inside, check on the outside just to make sure it's not coming through where it shouldn't. I'm going to put a second one in because it's blown a little bit and I just feel it will hold it better. As I said, I don't think I'll put anything heavy inside it, but it makes it a little bit more hard wearing. So let's move over to the other side. I apologize for the shadows, but it's a lot cooler over here. And this one has blown a little bit. Um, but that's okay. I think we can just hold it in place. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So exactly the same thing. Uh, level up or line up your nails and just tack them in as before. If we look at the middle of the chair, it's obviously not fixed together, but because there's a slight overlap, I think I'm just going to leave it and see how it goes. And at a later date, if I felt I needed... Um, the two bits fixed together I would probably put some staples in to hold them. The next thing I want to do is treat the chair for woodworm. Now you need to check all over your chair but more often than not woodworm on furniture is found on the bottom, the back and the bottom of the legs. Now it might look like there are not too many holes on the surface but it could be riddled with worm inside and I have in fact had a chair where the leg has snapped because it was completely rotten, completely eaten away inside. So what we need to do is have a really good look at these um, holes. Now if they're old holes they look darker and if you tap them nothing's coming out. If you have a hole and it looks pale inside, it's quite possible that it, the worm is still there, it's live or it's recent. So if we tap this one, you can see how the dust comes out. Okay, so I now need to give these a good dose of woodworm solution. Now you just need a good woodworm killer. Really, really get that. Work that into all of those holes. Check you've got them all. And you can see them once you've got the liquid on. They actually show up much clearer. So be very generous with your liquid. So on the second round, pour it over again. And with your brush, just stipple it or rub it. Just work it really well into all those holes. Now you probably won't have an inside on your furniture, um, but if you do, check inside as well. And you can see on the back of this piece of wood um, where the liquid has actually come through. So it's coming through, that should be getting any worms that are left in there. Um, just check all bits. There's a, a bit on this bar. It's old worm because it's dark, um, but I'm going to treat it anyway. And I will, once I've finished, leave it and treat it again tomorrow. The next step is to fill any cracks or um, nail holes um, just to cover it to make it smooth. It's got fairly water damaged 
here. I'm not quite sure why, but perhaps there was a leaky roof or something. Um, I think it was a dark chair to start with, but it's really, really faded being in um, verandas for very many years. Um, so have a good look around your chair, find all the cracks, and then you can start to fill. I'm just using a ready-made wood filler for this project. I do have a video that I've made on making your own homemade wood filler and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, we just need to give it a good mix and stir it in, get all that liquid in and then we're ready to fill. Using a putty knife or small scraper, just work the filler into um, the cracks and crevices. Um, work it everywhere you can, really push it down hard. And it's very tempting to scrape off as much as you can because it makes it much easier to sand afterwards. But if you leave it proud, You'll need a bit more elbow grease perhaps to sand it, but you get a better finish um, because otherwise you might end up finding that you have to go back and fill it again if it's dried and sort of sunk into that crack. Fill all the cracks and then we need to leave it to dry. So here we are on day two and the filler has now hardened. So let's take a look at some different options for sanding and the easiest is to use an electric sander. The next option is just to use a plain piece of sandpaper which you can get into all the grooves and the third is to use the block. Now I folded this piece of sandpaper ready so just find the right size and don't be tempted to cut the sandpaper it's going to blunt your scissors um, but sandpaper is very easy to tear so once you've got the right size just fold it round your block of wood and make sure that you end on a side piece because you're going to staple this in and you avoid sanding anything with the staples obviously because you're going to scratch it. So get it nice and tight around that block and then just staple it in place. And the staples um, then don't go in too hard, which means they're pretty easy to remove. So I've just got um, a little tack lifter here, or you can stick a screwdriver or a bradle under it and pull them out with a pair of pliers, or you could just put another piece on the top of it. So we're now ready to sand the chair. So let's um, take a look at the three different options. The first option is just to use a plain piece of sandpaper. Um, it rubs, it's smooth, but you have to put a lot of elbow grease in to really uh, get it smooth. The next option is the covered block. And this works really well because it is flat, so you can put more pressure on it and really rub and the final option is to use the electric sander. One thing I should have said early on probably is wear a mask. It's not so bad if you're outside, but definitely if you're inside. In fact, if you're inside, you might want a more substantial mask than this one, but we've all got plenty of these, I think, left over from the pandemic. Um, so put your mask on and then smooth as much as you can with the electric sander if you have one um, it gives a lovely finish keep smoothing it down filling it with your hand to make sure there's no rough edges where the filler is so everything's really really smooth ready for painting um, and this is and the 
sander can actually get into the little crack you must be careful especially if you're going to varnish a piece of furniture that you are definitely going with the grain because if you go across it you're going to see tram lines across there um the block is also quite good for getting into little crevices but again, you need to go with the grain and actually the sander can just get in that little edge a little bit better. With the block, you can use the very fine edge of it to get in. And for me on this um, front panel, the block's really good because I can run it along with the grain and get right into those cracks. So either option would work really well. So the last little bits in sanding this chair because I've got some little grooves, decorative grooves and I need just a plain piece of sandpaper just to get in those cracks and sand those just a little bit because I'm still going to have to paint in there. The single piece of sandpaper is also really useful if you've got a beveled edge like this one on the front um, because your fingers can really push that into the bevels on it um, and that's it really and you can at this point just give it a wipe over to get the dust off with um, a damp cloth so you can see on the back where I've put the filler and I've smoothed it down and the last thing I'm going to do today is give it another coat of uh, worm woodworm killer exactly as we did before I'm now going to strip down these metal trays. They're a bit lumpy bumpy. Most of the black paint has come off them. And this one's really quite rusty inside. So I wouldn't recommend doing this inside, but it has just started to rain. The door is open, so you're going to need good ventilation. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip them down and then have a look at how it is um, with the rust and everything afterwards. Put some good tough rubber gloves on. Cover your surfaces with some tough paper or cardboard. I've even got some on the floor um, because the stripper can melt plastic. I've got an old fish and chip carton to put the rubbish or the scrapings in and it's um, it's bored so it won't melt and I'm going to use this paint and varnish stripper now my first choice would be nitromores but the DIY store I went to didn't have any and they have this paint predator <laughs> I'm going to put it in this little cup. You need something that you can get your brush in. You're going to paint it on with a brush, leave it, and then scrape it off. Okay. Let's pour some stripper into, a, into the cup. And then apply it. Make sure you have a good thick covering on there. It does actually say don't brush it out so I just sort of dab it on. And then when everything's covered we're just going to leave that as per instructions for a minimum of 30 minutes so it's quite a slow job. So I'm now able to come out in the garden because it's stopped raining and I'm ready to scrape. I've waited half an hour and then I can now give it a good old scrape. And yep, coming off, that's good. And thank goodness for good old British fish and chips. I've got something to put the rubbish in. And if not, you can put it on the paper. I don't know um, what this black paint is. I guess it's quite possible. It's lead paint, but um, I am still wearing a mask because it's really, really fuming. So it's all scraped off now and you can see this green coming through here where the metal is I'm not sure why that is 
whether it has something to do with the paint or the metal but anyway it's come off reasonably well but I am going to give it another coat just because I'm curious really to um, see what it will come up like so that's a second coat added and now I can just wait another half hour So with the second stripping, I think it has taken it off a little bit. There's not a great deal more coming coming off it. Um, so you just it's just trial and error really, uh, depending I guess to a degree what paint is on either the piece of furniture, whether it's metal or wooden. And the process is the same, whether it's wood or metal. You just paint it on, strip it off until you're happy with it and then give it a clean which we will do next and um, sand it ready for painting so i just want to zoom in and show you close up how this is pickled up and then i can scrape the back off next the next step is get yourself a bucket of soapy water just um ordinary detergent and then give your metal a good scrub. It's unlikely that you'll have one of these, but you may have some bits of a chair, some handles, feet that you want to scrub. So give everything a really good scrub. And you can see here how that's coming off really well. Nice smooth surface under there, looking very good. And once you finish that, use the water to scrub out everything you've used um, your scraper your paintbrush and the cup so that you can use it for something else later i dried these well on a cloth and then i just sat them in the sun to get um drier but as you can see the rust is coming through still so rain stop play outside again so I've come in and I'm gonna treat the rust on these trays now you can either dilute this particular rust remover which is an HG um, or you can paint it on so back to the little cup if you soak it you dilute it if you brush it on you do it all in one go so protect your surfaces again, protect your hands, and let's give it a go. It's quite runny this, oh, okay, put it in all the cracks and just do the whole tray. So obviously it goes without saying, if you've got something small like the handles off a cupboard, you can just soak it. Um, I could probably soak these in a bucket, but I don't want to waste all the um, rust remover. So I'm just going to try it like this. And obviously if you've got a big table or something, metal table that you want to get um, the rust off, then you're not going to be able to soak it. So this is the way to do it. These have had an hour and I'm now going to rinse it off and see how much of the rust has gone. Okay, so we can see here that there's still some rust on the inside. The backs are all right, but uh, there really wasn't very much there anyway. The next step will be dry them, put some remover in the bottom and leave them overnight. These have now had about 15 hours and you can see I've just put a sort of fairly low layer of it in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is tip this into the cup because you need to dispose of all your chemicals. So when I finished washing the trays, I'm going to wash the brush and this cup out in the water and then I can dispose of all of it. I can see that the rust has really disappeared this time, so that's great. They look um, quite clear of rust now, but that doesn't mean to say it won't come back. So same process, let it dry take a look and then we'll go from there as I said before use this water to wash all your tools and get rid of the chemical 
you can then find somewhere where you're not going to kill any vegetation and throw it away. The trays are now very dry and there's a very, very faint hint of rust on the bottom. So I'm going to rub those with some wire wool. Wire wool comes in sizes four zeros, which is the finest, to four. The zeros are really for polishing. But I'm going to work with um, a one to just rub away and get the last bits of this rust off. And as there's no rust or very, very little on the back, we should be lucky uh, when we spray them. True British weather, we've now gone from rain to a howling gale. So I've come into my garage and built myself a little mini spray booth just with some cardboard, protect your surfaces and whatever's around you. I have a mask and some rubber gloves. The paint is an enamel primer for wood, metal or plastic. And hopefully this will keep the rust at bay. You may find if you can't depress the black cap that it has a protective seal underneath. Just remove the black cap, lift the seal out with a screwdriver and you're ready to go once you've replaced the black cap. Keep shaking the can as you go along. Try a bit on a piece of paper or something first and then spray slowly and finely so that you don't get runs. So do that all over and then you can come back and give it another coat. And I will give this two coats before I put on the top coat. Can usually say spray from 20, 30 centimetres away. I might not be, but for the best finish, that's what you want to do. These have come up really well. There's some lumps and bumps that I think are part of the old metal. But um, if we look inside, you can see how well um, the sanding, the wire wooling has got rid of the rust. So I'm just going to give these insides two coats of primer, let it dry, and then tomorrow I will put the top coat in. These have dried really well overnight. and. Um, they're looking fine. Interesting inside that this yellow has come through. I have no idea what it is. Maybe if there's anyone who works with metal and knows, you could leave me a comment. Um, it'd be interesting to know. So the next thing I'm going to do is put on the top coat. Um, black satin for metal, wood and plastic. Just um, a different type of protection cap, remove that, shake it um, for two minutes and then we're ready to spray. Um, I'm going to do just exactly as I did before, tops twice, bottoms twice, let it dry and then take a final look. It's all dry now, looks good. I'm leaving it in between uh, top and bottom because I can handle it, otherwise I'm going to get fingerprints on it and it will stick to the paper. So now let's spray the inside. I'll leave this to dry now and then come back for the second coat. The second coat has been sprayed, the trays are now dry and ready to go back in the chair. And I think these dents in the bottom are from old umbrellas that used to have some pretty sharp points on the ends of them. I've called in an expert. If you've treated it, it's mm. not going to get any worse. No, it's had four double coatings. Yes, that's, I guess that's done it because that's very dense. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure whether I could get anything to replace it. Well, that's, that's another thing, isn't it? Mm. My 92-year-old dad, we like to give him projects and he's very good at doing them. You went down there, yeah. you left that, I if you want to replace it, I could replace it, you'd have to take that off. 
Yeah, and take it down there for them to have a look. Yeah. Mm. See if you get us in a. Yeah. Mm. The general consensus being to keep it rather than um, try and replace it because we won't get anything, I think, quite like this other than hardboard and I don't want to put that on the chair. It's also a lot more economical to keep this one. So I'm just going to put a light coating of filler over these uh, wormholes which will make um, the painting a little smoother and if there's any slight dents the paint will fill that. When you fill wormholes you only need to put it on really finely um, so I'm going to do that sand it and then we'll be ready to paint time to sand it down but as my last camera has gone into repair as the wind blew the tripod over I'm just going to show you before and after photos and hang on to the camera a quick look at the um, wormholes close up you can barely see them now maybe some of the bigger ones but they should fill in with paint and not be seen at all I'm now going to repair the broken ends where the metal trays fit and these are the bars that have come off this one has the nails still in it so I know that comes from the far end and this is the one that my dad has made to replace the broken one. So I'm just taking out the old nail so we'll just fit that Oops. following the tripod malfunction thanks to the wind again we've come inside and I'm going to fit this bar in place and I'm just going to mark uh, where I want to put the nails with a pencil really difficult to find nails for some reason but these were the smallest ones I could find I don't want to put little panel pins in because I think the head might come through so I'm just um, going to hammer those through the bar and then we'll fit it to the chair If we come around to the other side, I've removed this little bit that holds the metal tray in because it's split. So I can't fit this bar onto that end. So I'm just going to rub it down, turn it around, and then I can use the wider end to nail that bar into. These bits are just glued on, so I need to get the old glue off both surfaces so that they can go back smoothly together. I am going to replace it with nails this time though, just so that it stays a bit more firmly in place. The next thing is to replace the end, so just take out the old nail, give it a sand and nail it back in place. Because the end is split where the old nail was, I've just moved it along a bit and then I can just fill that hole. I just nailed slightly through this bar so that I can get a grip when I put it on the ends and then just tap it home. If you have a nail in an awkward place and you can't get in there with your hammer and you don't want to damage your wood, you can just put a bradle on the head of the nail and then tap that home. I want us to take a look at this front panel because it's quite interested how it's fitted. It's loose. And if we look inside, you can see it's actually just wedged in with these little bits of wood. So I don't know if there was a reason for making it so that this front could be removed. Uh, so I'd like to put it back the way it was originally. So I'm going to try it. Um, it's going to have a bit more paint on it, which will help wedge it in a bit more firmly. But if it kept coming out in the future, I just could just put a couple of little nails through these bars. I'm now going to start to prime the chair. The paint I'm using 
is an exterior quick dry primer undercoat in white because the top coat that I'm using is a pale colour. Exterior wood and metal and it takes one to two hours between coats to dry but I will probably leave it a little bit longer. And you need very fine uh, bristle brushes if you're going to use a brush. Lots of people just use a roller. If you're going to use a roller, you need one that has um, a fine or smooth, fairly smooth edge on it. So we'll just um, mix this paint up and I'm going to put this on neat. It is possible to, this is a water-based paint, so it would be possible if I wanted it thinner um, to put it, to mix it in a pot with a little bit of water. But I'm going to start just doing it like this. And I'm painting, first of all, the inside of the chair and the bottom, because this is gonna be an outside chair, so it's very important that the bottom, which is gonna possibly get splashed, um, hopefully not too much, but it may do, that the bottom um, has a good covering as well. Before you paint, just wipe your surfaces, as this is a water-based, paint it's not going to hurt that I'm um, using a wet cloth and then you're ready to paint. Your paint brush size will just depend on what you're painting. Because this is just the inside I'm not going to worry too much about it. Just give everything a good coating. You'll only need one coat. If your wood isn't stripped down to bare wood you may not need a primer. Some paints um, say one coat you don't need the primer but if you've got down to bare wood depending as I say your paint you may need to use the primer first as this is going to be outside and in some places I have got down to the bare wood I'm just going to use it as a precaution when you're painting paint one way paint the other way and brush it out again and give it a really fine feather and then you'll find those brush strokes almost disappear you may hear uh, people say, oh, we can do this job in a day. And yes, you probably could. But if you want a really good job, take your time. Um, one other thing um, I should say that if you're painting wood, go with the grain. Because again, you'll lose your brush marks more if you can possibly see. If I go across, you can see the brushes. But go with the grain and those brushes will be lost even more. I just want to show you quickly how the paint has filled these wormholes. Uh, the ones here I've, I've just brushed over quickly, but I've worked the paint into these and they have gone in. I've not bothered to fill inside because <laughs> we're not really going to look at it that closely. We can fill in those holes. And once you've got two or three coats of paint on there, you're not even going to see them. If you're painting a bit on the underside, and you lap over like this wipe it off if you're not ready to paint it because you'll end up with a ridge and it's quicker than having to sand it later now if you come to an edge and you don't want to go over just stipple it with your brush okay and then you can just brush that out lightly and if you have gone over you can just wipe that top edge okay So that's the entire inside with a primer coat. And I'm now going to turn it upside down and do the base. The chair is now completely finished on the underside as well. And turning it upside down has given me a great opportunity to paint the underside of the arms and any other little bits I can see, including um, the panel that fits in the front which I can actually now because it's got these little feet on it I can turn it over and do the other side this is now the front of the chair so I want this to be really really smooth so give it a wipe and then start to feather the paint I'm going to start from the center just the same as before but this time you have really got to be careful to try and get those brush marks out. Okay, so really, really light feathering and you can barely see any marks on that. Don't let the paint dry, that's the only thing you have to work, you do have to work quite quickly at it. 
And remember, this is just the undercoat, really, so really, really light feathering. Once you've finished your painting, scrape off as much paint as you can. You then just rub your brush in some cling film until you've finished with the, this particular paint and the brush and you need to wash it out. And if you have a roller, you can do exactly the same thing. And you can put the, the roller paint tray in a plastic bag and seal it and that will keep fine for quite a long time. It's now an hour since I put the first coat on. So I've stood it on its feet and hopefully it won't stick. I'm going to keep the lid up so that I can let everything dry as long as possible. Always stir your paint when you come back. Take off your cling film. You can see that that brush is still really soft. I'm going to start at the top, work my way down, brushing out as much as possible. I will be rubbing down uh, lightly with some very fine sandpaper or wire wool in between um, coats of paint until I get to the last one. So the more I brush out, the less work I'm going to have in between. So that... And this, this paint, I think because it's the first coat, dries really quickly. So be careful that you don't you know, go too far initially. So I'm just going to work that in there to make sure that I'm not filling up my decorative pieces. Okay, and we'll just continue with the entire chair of the back and then I'll go around to the front. When you come to a decorative piece, you're going to have to just wiggle your brush in there, get all those bits coated, but remember to wipe on the back of it so that you haven't got, if you can see here, these ridges that you need to get out. I want to show you on the very back the um, wormholes have gone and you might ask why I bothered to fill them um, when the paint fills. The paint can shrink and then you would get um, holes coming through. And the other reason is that I can see if I get any more worm. I finished the back and it's quite patchy because you've got bits of filler coming through, um, some wood grain. There's some marks along this edge. It looks almost like it's been used as a saw bench. I don't think it has. It's an antique bench and I don't want it to look like new. Um, so I don't mind a few blemishes in it. But um, that's quite a good job. So I'm now going to continue around the front and do the seat. And then I'll show you when it's finished. One more little trick I can show you. If you've got a cloth, a lint-free cloth, that's a cloth that hasn't got bits of fluff that are gonna come off it, and it's damp, but it's at the point where it's drying, so not a lot of moisture in there, and your paint is at the point of drying, you can actually buff it. If it's an acrylic water-based paint, then you can give it a buff, okay? And that is another way to get a smooth finish. The only part of this chair I have left to do now is the top of the seat. And the reason I've left that is so that the two sides here and on the side of the seat don't stick together. And I can put that down there and finish the chair. And we we'll just take a look on here and you can see where the damp uh, patch has bled through a little bit. So on this um, stain here, I'm going to put another coat of primer on this bit of arm and then we'll see where we go. If you have water stains like this, it's quite often necessary to use an oil-based paint or you can just start with an oil-based damp sealer or primer. I've now left this overnight and it's very dry and ready for me to rub down gently. Now, using the techniques that I showed you before, the laying off with the brush really finely. And as I say, if you, you've got a grain, you go with the grain. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. You can brush it out. The next thing, you may also have rubbed it with your dry, fairly, fairly dry cloth and smoothed it. So actually this is all feeling quite smooth now, but there's one or two little sort of spikes, if you like, in the paint. Now you may 
be quite happy just to go ahead and paint it that's absolutely fine but if you want to get a really smooth finish then i'm using this block and it's it's worn so it's really really smooth you could also use the wire wool go with the grain or if you haven't got a grain you can use a circular motion because you're going to cover it with the next um, coat of paint okay and you just take off any sort of top spiky bits on there if you've got a bit where maybe you've got a ridge just rub it a little bit more to get that flat because it, it might show through okay and then you just continue back in the late 80s early 90s when paint finishes were fashionable on um, walls furniture i used to do this and we would um perhaps do some marbling and want it like a glass-like finish and we'd use very fine wet and dry sandpaper and sand that and it really did almost feel like glass it felt like marble at the end of it you'd barely notice if you were good enough to give it a really good finish so that's up to you what technique you use but I'm going to rub all this down I'm going to actually take it outside now and do it the great thing about the block is that you can get it into all the little corners you can bend it around just use the edge and you can get into all those shapes um, the cutouts you're just going to have to use if you have any you probably haven't but if you have just an ordinary piece it's worth just going in all those cracks and this feels so smooth now it's great so um wipe it down with a wet cloth make sure you've got all the dust out and you can hoover it if you like and then we're ready to paint so you need to make absolutely sure if you're working on a surface that that's as clean as your chair because every speck of dust is going to be a prickle that you will want to rub out the paint i've chosen it's called willow mist it's a water-based satin it's offer six years protection I will keep it covered in the rain this year I think it'll be most of the time um, so the next thing to do is just to give it a stir and get painting not very willow mist at the moment but I think it's lurking in the depths you need to stir definitely um, with your top coat because um, the colors separate so if you don't blend them in perfectly you can end up with streaks on your chair clean brush make sure you give your brush a good bash in case there's any bits in there or hairs that are sticking out exactly the same as we did the first time <laughs> choose where you want to start oh yeah good color and much smoother than the undercoat than the, pr the primer so that's going to brush out really well and if there's no bits of dust and dirt lurking around then that's going to that's coming on here really smoothly it's good so continue the whole chair just as we did before in exactly the same way brushing out i think the technical term is laying off your paint and they say as i said before lay if it's a, a piece that's static lay towards the light Depending on how many coats you're going to do, the very top coat you don't want to rub it down. So that wants to be a really, really fine coat. So with this one, you don't want it running, you don't want it clogging, but you do want to put enough on to give a good cover. If you've got any cracks or holes or dents that you can fill, this paint's quite thin, so it's actually not filling cracks very well. And I don't want it to go on over thickly but i do want to give quite a nice coating that i can rub down before my final coat you'll also see that when i lay off if you like i'm feathering but i'm i'm doing it with the grain because i've actually noticed that the grain does show through on this chair it may not do when i put the final coat on it it's quite pretty and it's sort of distressed um state it may not show when i put the finished coats on the first coat on the underside it's coming on well any bits that you can see i've even gone inside the little cutouts give it a quick flip over oh. <laughs> time to do the top 
blend it in, feather it out, lay it off, whatever you want to call it, good coat. So it's really, really smooth. And then I, when this dries, I'm going to try it with a cloth again and see if I can rub it a little bit smoother. But that needs to be almost dry before I can do that. So it's now the point where it's just a little bit tacky, so almost dry. And then with the cloth, I'm literally just almost feathering it again, just really smoothly. And that just helps to sort of push the paint into the wood. You can perhaps see that by doing, I mean, there's hardly, well, there's no paint on there really. What I'm trying to do is keep these little brass um, hinges clean. Very difficult because... Um, I'm just kind of painting all around with several layers. Actually, they look cleaner than they did when they started. If you have any brass fittings on your chair or any fittings, whatever their finish is, it's best to remove them. Handles, um, little feet, and then you can always put them back later. Probably goes without saying, but if you're painting a bit of furniture with a lid that doesn't remove, just lift it because you don't want to you want to try to avoid getting paint on this edge because it can stick if you have um, cracks obviously you can load your brush up and fill those cracks some are, some lines are decorative so be careful you don't fill those this seat's actually quite worn in the middle it's had quite a lot of sitting to get an idea of second coverage you can see here where the filler is showing through so it's quite patchy but putting this coat on is covering really well so that's the chair finished for the first coat and I have smoothed it all down with a cloth so I'll leave that overnight again and put on the last coat tomorrow. As before once you've rubbed down wipe it with a cloth all the bits even the bits that aren't going to be seen I'm not rubbed inside but I'm still wiping it because any dust falling on your top cover is going to make the prickles that spoil that smooth finish. I just want to show you the difference between the first coat and the final one. And if you look on here, we can still see uh, the white through and you can see some lines where the brush has been. We come down to the bit that I've just finished, but there are no lines on there. This is wet paint and it's smoothed out. You can still see some wood grain through it. I've now finished the chair's top coat, but I just want to show you on this last little piece how I feather out or lay off using the smooth side of the brush at a slight angle rather than the top bristle edge. I've painted the chair with an inexpensive fine bristled brush. You can use hog hair brushes to finish off for the smoothest finish, which you can buy online. But this high street brush has given me a smooth, professional finish that is more than adequate. Now the chair is completely finished. I've got a couple of um, finishing touches, one of which I want to do something to protect these feet. Even though they're painted, they've got three layers of paint. Um, I just want to make sure that if it rains, it's not really not going to get into that wood. So I'm very lucky that I have a local company, small local company that makes mats. So I've stolen a piece, a cut off piece from their bin, and I'm going to cut these out and make little feet. So very simply, all I need to do is measure, rule out on the matting, and cut it, cut those little feet out. Um, it's not quite so easy to cut the coir, and if you obviously don't want to cut up a mat, you might find an old bicycle tire or something that has something rubber on, or you may think of something different. For these little feet, because this coir is quite high, I've cut it down. Um, scissors weren't very successful, so I used a little tenon saw and then just trimmed um, so that it's even. So just a little bit gorilla, make sure you've got it the right way around. A little wiggle around so it's on both surfaces and we let those stick, stand it on its feet and they will squash into place. I've let the glue, 
the Gorilla Glue set on the feet for half an hour. I'm going to leave it in place for another couple of hours just so that I know it's really firm before I start moving it around outside. So the next thing is to put in the front panel. This has all been painted a few times. So, oh, definitely tighter. So I have come prepared. got a little mat here and I'm going to just get it to the mother. As I said at the beginning, the equipment and materials have virtually all been sourced locally in my local town high street. Nothing fancy, nothing over professional. My bench is now ready for the great outdoors, complete with my great grandfather's walking canes and a rather short umbrella but you get the gist. In part three, I'll show you how to make a pipe zip box cushion and cover for this bench. If you found this tutorial useful and can adopt the techniques for your own outdoor renovations, please like, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I make more videos. Thanks for watching and good luck with your project.